Welcome to IMR's webinar on the Symbio Beer Project, where industrial symbiosis was used to turn bread into beer. I actually heard about this project not long after joining IMR, and I remember thinking I'm in the right place. We're delighted to have Dr. Shane Colgan with us today. Shane is the Circular Economy Manager at the EPA, and I'll shortly be handing over to him for his opening remarks about the Green Enterprise Fund, the funding program for this project. I'll then bring in Dr. Geraldine Brennan, IMR's Senior Circular Economy Program Manager, and Giovanni Impoco, IMR's Industrial Symbiosis Technical Lead. Geraldine will give a brief overview of IMR for anyone joining that mightn't be familiar with us yet, and she will explain the link between industrial symbiosis, the circular economy, and wider sustainability. Giovanni will then give an overview of the Symbio Beer Innovation Pilots. We will also be hearing from Liam Hanlon, co-founder and brewer at St. Mel's Brewery, and Pierre Delanoy, R&D test baker at Penelto Foods, about the reflections and takeaways from being part of this industrial symbiosis demonstrator over the last year. We'll then hand back to Giovanni to highlight some broad implications of the demonstrator for mainstreaming industrial symbiosis, not only in the brewing and bakery sector, but in the Longford region, and concluding with high-level industry policy insights. If you have any questions for any of our panelists anyway through the webinar, you can ask them using the question and answers function at the bottom of your screen as well, and we'll get to them at the end and just indicate which panelist uh, you'd like to ask the question to so that it's easier for them to understand. First up, it's Dr. Shane Colgan. Welcome, Shane. Great. Thanks, Gary. Thanks very much. Um, and I won't take too much time. I'm just Glad to have a chance to welcome you all to this this webinar. Um, as Gary's indicated, the, the work was funded through the EPA's Green Enterprise Programme. So I just thought I'd take a quick sec to make a few remarks and then let you get into the, 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 the meat of what we're actually here to hear about. You know, I guess the, the, the work area we're talking about here is the circular economy. So really, and without labouring, just to think about what the circular economy is, is this phrase, I hope we're hearing more and more. We certainly do here, but we hope other people are. And it's really about, you know, I suppose what it's based on really is you know, maintaining and growing economic activity while at the same time reducing the kind of the extraction and consumption of virgin raw materials. So very much looking at that idea of maintaining and growing the economy as, as well as um, as well as um, the, the environmental dividend, I suppose, of cutting down on the consumption side of things. Um, so really at the heart of it then is the waste hierarchy. And we're really thinking about the idea that you know prevention is going to be the very best way that we can um, we can start cutting down consumption. So is there some way that we can reuse something that's already in in, in, circle, in circular motion in, in systems, whether it's a household consumption system or whether it's an industrial consumption system? Um, so really, I guess resource efficiency is in there and really starting to think about, you know, as a business uses resources, are they using them as cleverly as they can? If there are byproducts coming out, during that process, is there somebody who can use those? And that's really where industrial symbiosis comes in. And we'll hear a little more about that. So really circular economy, thinking about resource efficiency, and then underpinning all of this for this particular project would be food waste. Um, you know, food waste is a huge issue from a climate point of view. We, we estimate, or at least the international government Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change estimate that up to 10% of greenhouse gas emissions are associated with um, food that ultimately ends up getting wasted. Um, so it's a major climate issue. It's obviously a resource use issue if you think of all the resources that go into make food. And it's a cost issue. You know, um, organizations spend a lot of money on their raw materials that go on to become, you know, possibly wasted food items. So, so food waste is a big issue too. So we've circular economy, we've resource efficiency, we've food waste. And those are areas that are of deep concern to us in the Environmental Protection Agency, where I look after the National Waste Prevention Programme, so the, the little logos there on the screen. And what we do is we, we work at national level, we support st strategic programmes that, that, that look to, to, I suppose, prevent waste and to drive the circular economy in Ireland, um, usually through a model of either partnership or funding innovations, or maybe doing advocacy, evidence, reports, surveys, this sort of stuff. So this is how we work. The Green Enterprise, which you see on the left-hand side there, is a key part of it. Um, so we're looking to, you know, enhance this idea of competitiveness, resilience to supply shocks, to climate shocks, to, to marketing shocks. So, you know, helping people be innovative in those areas um, to, to, to really look at developing solutions and sustainable solutions, both from a business point of view and an environmental point of view. And then, you know, at the end, looking at outcomes there in the third, the third column, looking at how we can start meeting sustainability targets, meeting the objectives of the circular economy. And, and you know, so that the likes of ourselves and, and the government can 
hear what needs to happen in the circular economy from the ground, from people who do green enterprise projects and teach us what needs to, what needs to be changed. So that's really the area we're, we're working in. Um, we're going to be moving ourselves soon to a circular economy program from the National Waste Prevention Program, We're kind of a name change, but mostly what it's going to be about is a redirection into the circular economy. And we'll be going out for public consultation soon and looking for your input on that. So just keep an eye open for that. So that's really as much as I was going to say. I think, you know, the project here is, you know, it's an excellent circular economy project. What you're looking at something that's produced a you know, a novel market friendly product and at the same time is reducing material consumption. So, you know, there's the circular and the economy piece both coming together. So really, we're delighted to see this piece of work going. And at that, I'll set you off and let, let the webinar proper begin if, if you like Gary thanks for that thanks very, thanks very much Shane um, yeah so now we'll bring in Geraldine Brennan thank you Gary so over the next couple of minutes I'm just going to do a very brief introduction to IMR the Symbiobia uh, project team and also just set the scene building on what Shane has highlighted around the connection between the circular economy industrial symbiosis and wider sustainability so who are IMR we're a mid to late stage technology um, technology readiness level technology center supported by Enterprise Ireland and IDA Ireland our resident detra is to demystify, de-risk and deliver emerging technologies and concepts like industrial symbiosis and like circular economy to Irish industry. We're organized around four key uh, thematic areas. Firstly, around digitization, where we are helping industry to gain value and competitive advantage through data extraction and transformation. Secondly, around automation and controls. So everything from deploying automation and control technologies like cobotics, robotics, um, uh, AI automation through to design for manufacturing, um, effectively looking at customer defined manufacturing, additive and subtractive manufacturing. And then the fourth area is around sustainable manufacturing where the Symbiobia project sits. And effectively what we're doing here is innovating across the materials, energy and water nexus to deliver and support industry on their journey towards sustainability in Ireland. In terms of acknowledging the wider team, um, myself and Giovanni are here representing the Symbio team project team in IMR today, but um, it would be remiss of me not to acknowledge the input from uh, the Director of Sustainable Manufacturing, uh, David McCormick, and also uh, Dr. Olu Dunson Aradudu, who's also been key uh, to this project, and uh, wider support from colleagues like Sophie Reynolds, Roman Couture, Geraldine Ann Kusek, and Adriana over the lifespan of this one year project. In terms of our project partners, um, I'm delighted to be here with um, Penelto Foods and St. Mel's. We've got, as uh, Gary said, Pierre Delanoy from Penelto Foods, but I want to acknowledge the role of Brian Gearin, the general manager in Penelto Foods, and also uh, Viraj Selvi and their role in the project. Um, and also another actor who came in and played a role, uh, given that this project has been implemented during COVID, uh, I would just want to acknowledge that Chagas um, did play a role in the project to support us to uh, effectively uh, transform some of the bright products into inputs and Giovanni will go into a bit of detail here later on. Now on to a bit of context with regards to what is industrial symbiosis? How does it fit with regards to the circular economy? So effectively, it's a key strategy in circularity. And the drivers for the circular economy are similar to the drivers for industrial symbiosis. It's about economic gains. It's about the environmental performance and benefits from effectively uh, transforming a byproduct into a co-product. It's about increasing resilience in supply chains. It's about a supply chain and actually, particularly with industrial symbiosis, about cross-sectoral collaboration. You know, we are, are here today uh, to report the findings about a brewer and a bakery who are, who are not necessarily uh, uh, normal collaborators in everyday life. Uh, apart from in the context of, of an innovation demonstrated like today. And really industrial symbiosis and circular economy is all about trying to captivate and capture the advantage of looking at waste and surplus in a new way and seeing it as a resource and a, a form of um, innovation and economic uh, value creation uh, potential. The other thing about all this, and you know, Shane mentioned the fact that um, there are, are different consultations coming. The circular economy is on the government of Ireland and the EPA's agenda. And effectively, it's about supporting industry to understand 
what is how can it be future fit uh, as as we go over the next number of years um, another key point to make here is the fact that the circular economy in general is uh, estimated to represent a, a circa 2 billion euro annual opportunity to the Irish economy. So again, there's, there's a, a big opportunity here for companies who can get their head around the full gambit of circular economy strategies. So again, I won't stop too long here, but effectively circular manufacturing ranges from product design to design through manufacturing, reuse, repair, refurbishment, upgrading, product service systems, buyback, take back systems, co-use and redistribution, closed new production and industri industrial symbiosis, uh, byproduct exchange, material substitutions, valorization, which is the heart of the Symbiobia project, as well as recycling. So in terms of bringing industrial symbiosis to life, in 2018, um, a industry-led European um, consortium effectively came to the conclusion and developed a definition to highlight the fact that industrial symbiosis is effectively the use by one company or a sector of underutilized resources. So this includes waste, surpluses, production residuals, byproducts, but also energy, water, logistics, capacity, expertise, and equipment and materials uh, that are effectively underutilized in a sector or in a company with the result of keeping uh, resources and productive use for longer. In terms of highlighting uh, a case study um, that has been around for a very long time um, to bring this idea of valorization, developing new uh, co-products and byproducts from residuals, this uh, image here is of British Sugar's uh, beet sugar site in the UK. And effectively, what you're looking at is a material flow map highlighting how from the core production of sugar beet, there are effectively over seven, eight different co-products that when you start to see uh, residuals and waste in a production system, you have the opportunity of creating potentially new products. So effectively the, the high level story from, from this example is the fact that um, the, the opportunities are endless if you look at your business and your production facilities in a, from a different lens. Without further ado, I'm going to hand over to my colleague Giovanni Poco. Over to you. Thanks, Geraldine. Good afternoon, everyone. So, what's Symbiobia? Symbiobia is an industrial symbiosis demonstration pilot started in 2020, and it's almost about to, to end between St. Mel's Brewery, Panetto Foods, which is an industrial bakery firm, and industrial uh, Irish Manufacturing Research. We, oui. and it's founded by EPA. So the project objectives were demonstrate the feasibility and the business case for creating industrial synergies between actors in the Longford area. De develop also register opportunities for potential synergies in the Longford area still, uh, identify key barriers and success factors, which are very important to, for a wider implementation of industrial symbiosis between both um, sectors, beer and bread manufacturers. Also develop a policy recommendation for the potential of scaling up implementation of industrial symbiosis in Ireland. <clears throat> so uh, this, is, this was our first step, identifying mapping all the different waste flow uh, which are um, occurring between the industry partners. As you can see on the top, we have some waste which are going straight to environmental collections. Uh, repack for Panelto and um, municipality collection for some else, and also some wastewater which goes straight to sewer. Nowadays, they are selling uh, cooked dough, uh, bread, to, and also spent grains to farmers. But our idea was to valorize those uh, byproducts mentioned already, uh, just just now. So, so the the objectives, the key fundings of the demo was valorize. In higher value application, those uh, or in new products, those um, residues. For instance, uh, we are talking about the cooked dough and the uh, brewing spent grains, uh, rather than utilizing them as an animal feed, as they are doing right now. So, cooked dough was valorized into melted grain substitute, and instead, the brewing spent grains was valorized into nutritional ingredient or flour substitute for panetto. 
The Samuel Brewery launched uh, in December 2020 uh, this Empire Beer Project One, a limited edition beer, which was a tasty Belgian style golden ale. They used intentionally bread coming from Panetto, uh, which did not affect the flavor of the beer in, at all. So it was enabled the use of uh, material substitute across portfolio of beers. <clears throat> the, production, uh, the production process also had some implication. For instance, cook dough uh, also requires a food step like drying and crumpling um, the cook dough in order to be suitable for the mash. On the other side, Panelto uh, used the spent grains for a flour substitute. The first experiments were using uh, um, um, burning yeast and also spent grains uh, as it was, but both of them were not found uh, suitable for the Panetto production. So there were also some other implications and uh, the spent grains were needed to be transformed in a feasible way, so in flour. The spent grains was also uh, add some food steps like drying, milling, and also test the feasibility of utilizing it as a substitute of, for flavor. Other uh, issues were coming out from the scaling of from pilot to mass production. For instance, controlling the consistency of the spent grains and nutritional value from batch to batch from some melts. So um, here we are talking about some enables barrier we identified uh, in the, <clears throat> in the um, SymbioBeer pilot project. So we can see there were some barriers like the compliance since um, since food uh, since the food regulation is very strict. We also identify some barriers in the infrastructure, as I already mentioned, uh, milling, crumbling, slicing were also some food steps, so they require uh, further investments in equipment. But also uh, and and also we found out some uh, barriers related to costs. But I will come back about this later. As Enable, we'll find out some high technology readiness level, level, which means uh, the byproducts could be used right away and you did not uh, um, change the production process of both industries. We found out so also some enables in the geography of those uh, both companies. Since the close location uh, was enabling the collaboration with both partners, but also lowering costs such as logistics, that's why I say uh, also cost was a barrier. And also we found out that uh, a facilitator was very important in this pilot project. For instance, I'm out. The Simple Beer pilot was a one-to-one -one collaboration between, so the SEMMELS, which is a micro enterprise and industrial baker. But what, what was needed for making viable this byproduct transaction in an adoption, in a mainstream adoption? So in the mainstream adoption, we uh, could be some other potential problem um, issues to, to find out, like both sectors should work together. So breweries and bakeries together. The scale is a key to make it commercially viable and also investment as I already mentioned are important uh, for a new infrastructure or new value chains. Here, some actors who be con could contributing in transforming residual uh, residuals or filling market gaps. Okay, so here we had also, um, now I open the floor to our industry partners. We are going, which are going to share their reflections and insights of the pilot. Um, I'm talking, um, I will present you Liam Malone from Summer's Building and also Pierre Delanoy from Panetto Foods. Thanks Giovanni. Um, sustainability is one of our core values as a company that has been since we were founded. Um, and there's economic and social and environmental drivers for that. And so when we heard about this project, uh, it fitted our aspirations and we were very keen to get involved. Um, a project like this is a bit of a, a leap into the unknown for a company. Uh, and the smaller the company, the greater that leap can be. Um, there was also the added complication of COVID just as we started. We started this project in March 2020. So as we were doing this project, we were also reorganizing our business um, and changing how we do business. We, we started the project with the hope that we could we could um, create, bread, create beer from bread without impacting the flavor of the beer. So therefore that bread could be used as raw material in all our beers without changing uh, the flavors that our customers are used to. 
we did several pilot batches um, using several different types of bread. And then we had a sensory analysis. Uh, there were lots of volunteers to help us with the sensory analysis from all the organizations involved. Happy to say that most of them were happy with the outcome. Um, after that, we scaled up. Uh, we, chose a, we chose a Belgian beer because the flavors from a Belgian beer are heavily reliant on the yeast and the yeast interaction with raw materials. So if, if the bread was adding anything to the beer, it would come true in the flavor. We think, we, we think it didn't, and we think it was a very successful outcome. The, uh, the other great learning for us from this whole process was the importance of uh, sustainability and the circular economy. I knew about sustainability. I didn't know much about the circular economy. What I, what I have learned uh, over the last 12 months is that it's, uh, it's critical for all industries and all industries have got opportunities um, for symbiosis with other companies and we should all be looking into that. That's all I have to say, apart from the beer is still available on our website. Thanks. Thanks, Liam. Uh, Pierre? Welcome. Good evening, everyone. My name is Pierre Denoy. I'm the R&D test baker for Panetto Foods. So I will uh, just agree with uh, what Liam was talking just previously in terms of business and sustainability, which also become a, a big part of our main focus here in, in Panetto Foods. And as part of the project, I was asked to join the team by my superiors about a year ago, so a bit around March last year for, for joining the, the project. From our side, we wanted to see can the spent grain can be used uh, as a, for the bread and can we make bread out of the, of the grains? And also what beneficial will it bring? Will it be more part of flavor or, or nutritional value? So uh, working with my coworker Viraj Savi, we worked in the test bakery and we started to work with the grains as a raw material and quickly we realized that it was quite challenging to handle in, uh, as part of a, a raw ingredients. So we had to go into different steps where we started to dry the grains and to, uh, to minimize the moisture inside. And after we start to add it into the dough and into the our preferments, and once we add uh, the moisture to a control to a certain level, we had looked at the nutrient. Our, our breads uh, are constantly checked uh, to, for nutritional value to ensure we supply consistent results to our customers, and therefore we need to have a, a consistent level of nutritional um, spectrum. So we we looked at can we use the spent grain as a substitute for any existing ingredients we are using to claim the, to have the same nutritional value into our breads. So we worked around uh, using the grains more into a, a, a substitute for another ingredient as a flour process. So we worked with a tagash, as Geraldine mentioned earlier, and we got our grains dried up and then milled, grind into a, some sort of flour that we were able to use um, into the bread. And we were successful to, to, uh, to create a, a loaf uh, using the, the, the spent grain from Lim um, to, to facilitate uh, the project. Now, our findings were more in terms of constraints that can bring to a, 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 to a bakery in order that all the little steps that have to be added on to, uh, to use a final ingredient. Um, all these little steps have a cost. And when you work in a large scale bakery, um, which we are with very strict constraints, um, it, it can be added on before we are actually able to use the ingredients and always requires a capital investment. So it was very um, challenging in terms of, of cost before bringing it to the large scale production. Thanks, Liam and Pierre, for your insights and reflections. So, our next step was mapping all the industries in the Longford area and try to find industrial synergies opportunities. Identify what kind of byproducts were also like, uh, were likely to exist given industries that were already present. Uh, for instance, local industries, uh, you can find those in yellow and, um, in the, and also in businesses in red box that they did not exist in the region. So, uh, as you can see in the Longford area, <clears throat> some high volume, low value opportunities were found out, which means uh, construction, demolition waste, bio waste, heat, steam, 
water. So all, most of them had a transaction within the long port area because sometimes um, investments and also logistics can impact a lot on those costs, final costs. After that, we will find out some uh, regional transaction, for instance, some connection between the steel manufacturers and the cement producers due to the uh, steel slug, but also other high, up, high value application of spent grains and whey for pharma, in, uh, for instance, in polyphenols and proteins, and also some extra ex, um, external uh, regional transaction, for instance, leather from uh, meat processes, or, uh, so linking those with tanneries, but also recover of high value materials from medical devices. For instance, cobalt can be one of them. Then, so now we are going to start the section four, exploring, exploring barriers and enables in the mainstream industrial symbiosis. So the work, uh, we did a workshop with key actors uh, in the bakery and the brewing sectors. It was very, uh, there was a very uh, a huge variety of companies coming from multinationals to SMEs to startups. They were also including uh, actors from complementary sectors who can utilize residuals and also some participants from local governments and regional de uh, economic development. The, the focus of the workshop was to explore the key challenges of making valorization of production residual mix mainstream. So how to go from the pilot we did with some males and Panelto to a mass production, to the max, max production contest. From the pilot and the workshop, we were uh, getting some, uh, making a uh, insights. For instance, we were founding, uh, funding we found, uh, we found a higher value application for the residuals in order to make economical economic and environmental sense in those transactions. We found out also multiple different ways to valorize residuals. For instance, bread to beer and vodka, or bread to biofuels, also uh, bread to bioplastics, or spent grains to polyphenols, or even into furniture. But for creating uh, viable synergies, something required, for instance, very important are data, uh, availability data and information sharing. We know that the food sector is very strict in terms of ingredients and regulation. So uh, some requirements, production requirements are residu um, and also uh, availability of residuals is needed. Access to substitute for scaling operation. So we need to ensure quality and the consistency of those in secondary ingredients or in, um, secondary ingredients. Also sector approaches or new value up, uh, chains. The quality assurance was also important and mentioned because traceability is a key in this transition, but also food quality standards compliance for residuals. Also, we got some policy uh, insights from uh, regional development uh, actors. For instance, it was needed to raise awareness in, food, in the food sectors because production residuals can be valorized in uh, new revenue streams or, or, or running into cost savings. Unfortunately, currently, uh, currently residuals end up into a lower value applications. You can see the food waste hierarchy on the right or in waste management systems. So there is a lack of uh, visibility of production residuals in the regions. Economic and uh, regulatory instruments are also needed to penalize lower food waste application or develop coordination programs which provide facilitation and develop tailored instruments to support synergies. We also uh, found out an interesting case study, uh, so for instance, uh, which is called Active, uh, running from the French Chamber of Commerce. It developed an online tool to facilitate secondary raw materials market through identification, qualification, analysis of or uh, uh, regional waste streams. Now we are going to the conclusion. So industrial symbiosis and test new type of collaboration between and within sectors. As outputs, we can say that residuals can be used as substitute for virgin raw materials. 
it brings some um, benefits. For instance, reducing CO2 uh, emissions would increase supply chain resilience, but also uh, bring savings in money and also creating new revenue streams. The mainstream um, in the bakery and uh, brewing sector will need to scale because it's a key to make it commercially viable. Likely also, we are likely also to require multiple breweries working with multiple bakeries. Investment, as we said, also are important in infrastructure, but also fill in the gap in the new value chains with the new actors who can transform residuals. Also a local, a local government, a regional development support because they can drive and assist companies and provide instruments to support synergies. Okay, thank you very much, Giovanni. So we have a couple of questions in there. Um, first up, we have got for Giovanni, could you elaborate on the estimated GHG reduction potential of the Symbio beer demonstrator? We found out um, a reduction of 3% in the, comparing the current scenario and the industrial simplicity scenario between both companies which is mostly in line with the European uh, targets, which is between two and 4% of the CO2 reduction. Thank you very much. And this is for Liam or for Giovanni. Uh, are you in a position to share any insights into the economic impact of substituting malted grain with cooked dough? I'll, I'll take that for you, Giovanni. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, 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 there was a number of challenges thrown up by, by uh, the process um, and one of the key ones is that the, the, the bread coming straight off the line can't be used there's there's a, a an, an energy put input required to dry the bread um, and the economies of scale uh, need to be quite high for that for, to, need to kick in uh, quite uh, quickly uh, for that to make sense so the, the uh, there is a cost saving to using the bread um, but you need to be using it in, in a lot of your beers. So we, we, we wouldn't have saved a huge amount of money uh, in this case. Um, but if we were doing it in all of our beers, there would be a saving, I think. Okay. And this is for yourself, Liam, or Pierre. What advice would you give to a brewery or a bakery or any other manufacturer in the food sector interested in going into the journey to valorize to, or make value of waste? Uh, or establish an industrial synergy? Um, it's a good question, but I mean, it, it, it's not a simple process. We have quite basic uh, brewing equipment here. Uh, it's basic even for a microbrewery. Um, so you really need to think about what you need to do with your equipment before you, you get into using the bread. Um, somebody asked about uh, word separation in the Q&A and I typed an answer. Bread is full of gluten, which presents a lot of challenges in word separation. So you need to have a good think about that before you start putting bread into beer. And the other big thing is the the, the bread does need to be treated before you start using it for it to be to be uh, economically viable. So that somebody needs to do that too. Uh, is is there a reason why the beer was eight point one percent? Is is that anything to do with the process itself? I wanted to challenge the process. Um, so 8.1% is the biggest beer we've brewed commercially on the equipment we have. It's probably as big as we can get it. Uh, and, I, and I wanted to challenge, um, I regretted it while I was doing it, but I wanted to challenge, <laughs> I, wanted to, I wanted to challenge the process. Um, we, 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 knew, we knew from the trials that word separation was achievable. I wanted to see if we could break that when we were, when we were brewing the, the beer. So, Brilliant. and, and it suits the style. <laughs> Um, a question from Michael Bank, and I'll bring this to everybody or whoever wants to answer. Can someone touch on the possible restrictions or problems that can be encountered from a food safety point of view when acquiring bread? Um, from that point of view, the, bre the bread needs to be a product from the bakery uh, from a food safety point of view and needs the full traceability. And then you need to apply that traceability to your, to your production as well. Um, that's that's it really obviously the bread needs to be uh, edible yeah and if i 
just coming in as well, Gary, and it's going yep. to sound like a small point, but um, you know, when people talk about waste bread, and this touches on this sort of stuff as well, you want to keep away from thinking and describing this material as waste because waste legislation is really tough stuff. And if you give anyone to understand that you're dealing with waste, you're in a big problem. And when you start trying to explain this to any kind of local authority, EHO or something like that, and you mention waste, it's going to touch off a whole lot of series of bells with them. So it's really thinking about it as a byproduct and saying, you know, this, this is, you know, fully edible bread that for some reason didn't get eaten. Um, so it's a, just it's it's a it's a slight terminology thing, but I think it, it'll be practical for people going forward just to keep away from the the word waste. Yeah, yeah well, that makes sense. <laughs> and if I could chime in, thank you for that, Shane. It's a really important point. We spoke really about the surplus and the production residual, meaning it's it's never waste in the sense of the current scenarios that it is sold as animal feed, so it never falls into that waste classification system. But effectively, what industrial symbiosis in the context of the food sector is seeking to achieve is that industries understand that there are higher value applications and there's greater greater understanding um you know like giovanni highlighted when it comes to bruce bent grain and cooked dough the applications are actually actually numerous they go from making beer to gin to bioplastics to um essentially using bruce bent grains to create polyphenols that are antioxidants that are used in the the chemical sorry the pharmaceutical and the cosmetics industry to using Bruce Bain grain as a, a, a material, a cellulose-based material for um, furniture by Nova Nordisk and Carlsberg uh, in other parts of Europe. So effectively, that whole idea of looking at the surpluses in your production system, the residuals in your production system, and potentially understanding what are the properties of those residuals and what other sectors could use them. Because again, often what happens is things tend to fall into uh, things like um, animal feed applications. And it's not to say that that isn't a good use for those, but there might be other higher value applications in other sectors that you, that you may not be aware of. Thank you, Geraldine. There is another question about what difficulties were faced when making Symbio beer. So I'd say they were touched on a little bit. What were the main difficulties, Liam, would you say? Um, get, getting the bread to the right specifications so we could maximize the extract from it uh, was one. That, that's very easy to do on a pilot scale. But when you're getting when you're getting up to a commercial scale, um, and that's where Tagus helped us out, Geraldine mentioned that earlier on. Um, and then the other major issue was was wort separation, which the brewers on here will understand. But it's where it's where we extract the liquid sugary extract from the from the grain bed in the mash tun, um, and all that gluten in the bread clogs up the mash tun. So it, it, those were the two big ones. Yeah, tell me about the name, Symbio Beer Project Number One. It's the first one. <laughs> so we 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 have we we have aspirations. I, I was very interested in particular with um two of the breads we trialed. Uh they did they did they did affect the flavors. Um but we do think we can make some very nice beer using those flavors. So we you you hopefully see project number two or three. Yeah, very good. And would they continue to be Belgian style or would you be trying to change it up a bit? Uh, not necessarily Belgian. I won't say too much. You won't say too much. No, there's too many. There's too many brewers on here. Give <laughs> <away>. <laughs> um, I did see yourself, Liam, and on on Crack Beer Community with Brian Cal. I think he's actually in attendance today, and he commented on the beer. He was tasting it as a, as he was talking to us. I wish we could do that now, but but anyway, um. That he commented about the beer that it was an absolutely fantastic, phenomenal beer. And he was saying that without the asterisks of, you know, it's fantastic for a sustainable beer or it's a fantastic beer for one that's using uh, surplus bread. But as it's an unbelievable as a standalone beer. So I think that is a fairly powerful testimonial coming from a man who knows his stuff about beer. How, how are you finding the sales of it or the reaction to it yourself? Flying, it's flying. Um, Belgian style beers wouldn't be that commonly brewed in Ireland. There, there, there's a few guys doing them, um, and we weren't sure how it would play with our local market. Most of the beers we do are lagers and ales, 
they're kind of easy drinking. So this is a bit more of a challenging beer. But yeah, we're, we're, we're getting a lot of fans and a lot of repeat customers. Very good. Yeah, repeat customers. That's the key one, especially with, uh, with the beers. <laughs> uh, I think, Pierre, have we got you back online? I am, yes. Um, so a question that Liam answered earlier. What advice would you give to other bakeries um, or other manufacturers in food sector interested in going on the journey to valorize waste or establish an industrial synergy? Uh, well, first of all, it is, it is very valuable. And um, certainly there is, a, there is a big project now of, of making, um, keeping, reducing the waste as much as we can. You know, but now for, for a bakery part of view, um, Certainly, there is a lot can be done, and and the Spain the Spain brand were a great example. You know, it's 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 making value out of of, of something that it's it's gone drain. You know, for for a bakery, depending on your size, depending on your process, uh, says you you can have you can face a lot of opportunities and a lot of constraints. Um, a smaller bakery, a small artisan bakery will have will produce much less volume, but you will have much more flexibility in this process in a way when us at, at a large scale, we, we are facing more constraints as, as I mentioned earlier, but definitely uh, there is opportunities and, and, and this kind of, of, of grains once it's processed and once you know exactly what you're aiming for, is it for flavor or is it nutritional uh, value or support, uh, it can be, um, can be very, it can be a great design and a great a great product um, to have on the market, you know. It's, yeah. it's becoming more and more popular to see bakers using this type of grains uh, or going under this this route, I would say, of, of using um, from a, a different partner, such as a brewer or, or winemakers or whatever, to use some sort of a process to, to enhance their own, uh, their own product. Yeah. Very good. Thank you, Pierre. Uh, Geraldine, maybe I'll aim this one at you. For the companies out there looking to do something like this, whether they're a brewer, a baker, or a company in another area, where should they go? Where do they find out what's possible? So um, a, a parallel project under sustainable manufacturing in IMR is called um, Circular, the National Platform for circular manufacturing and we have an open access uh, circular economy knowledge library where case studies about industrial symbiosis, sectoral reports about industrial symbiosis and the full gambit of circular economy are hosted. It's completely open access, it's completely free. So it's definitely somewhere to go to start exploring this and understanding what it could mean for your business and your sector. The other thing I would say, and this was key to how Giovanni um, kind of illustrated how we started the process with St. Mel's and Penelto is one thing you need to understand is what are the flows, the material flows and residuals in your process. So that flows map, which is an indicative magnitude of what are the, the materials you're using and what happens to them, how much of it is used in your processes and how much of it is a residual. That's the first step, creating some sort of understanding of your baseline and understanding what those flows are. You know, is there seasonality? What are the aspects and constraints you have around them? And then whether or not there are effectively secondary raw materials or byproducts from another sector that you could use, like what Liam did with the effectively using the cooked dough to um, provide a partial substitute for malted grain. We didn't replace, he didn't replace all of his malted grain in the beer production with, with um, cooked dough, but a partial substitution and thereby, you know, uh, diversifying his supply chain um, and, and ultimately with regards to the potential for scaling up. Uh, potentially, you know, leading to considerable cost savings if you can get the right economies of scale. Thank you. Very good. Um, final question is to Liam again, and it's from Victoria. She wants to know where can she buy them in Dublin, please? That's a great question, Victoria. <laughs> uh, there, there, we didn't distribute this widely. It's mainly for sale on our website, samemelsbrewing.com. But there is an excellent little off license in a place called 57, the headline. And Jeff there will look after you with some bottles of it too. Okay, very good. Well, that's it with the questions. Um, has anyone any further comment to make before we wrap it up? Gary, I saw Shane was keen to come in there um, while myself and Liam were on diatribes. Giovanni also might like a last word. 
I, I just had a question. I, I think because I'm a panelist, I couldn't type in a question. Um, but I was just wondering, Liam, um, if you get any sense if the symbio circular economy thing pressed any buttons with your with your um, customers? Oh, it totally did. Totally did. Um, it brought us. It brought us uh, a whole lot of new customers. It was. It was very good from a publicity point of view as well. Um, but but what we do find is people are very enthusiastic about the idea of small companies focused on sustainability, um, and it definitely helps you get more support, especially locally. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Liam. Uh, Giovanni, any closing remarks? Well, <laughs> actually, I find that very 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 interesting. You know, at least. Understanding barriers and enables in this industrial symbiosis pilot project, and also understanding how to scale those operations, and finding also new viable applications. It was quite challenging, even also due to the COVID, but very very interesting, I would say. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to thank all of our panelists today, Liam, Geraldine, Giovanni, Pierre, and Shane, and go buy yourself some Symbio Beer project number one. Thanks everyone for joining. Thanks, Carrie. Bye, bye. Thank you.